Okay, guys, I'm so excited. Um, I am here with Summer. Um, she owns a CBD store called the House of Healing. So I'm really excited for you guys to learn from her. And we're really going to be talking about how to avoid um, back pain and surgeries and really just in any kind of pains um, using CBD and physical therapy because it's a really good um, combination. So a little bit about me and Summer. So um, I am an owner of Empower Physical Therapy. We've been in a business for about five years and really just try to do healthcare a little bit differently. But I've been a physical therapist for like 20 years and um, love it. Um, always in looking at more like holistic ways of healing people. Um, I've been through a lot of like health issues and kind of got um, sick of, of some of like, not, you know, medicine has a place, but, um, there's a lot of things that we can do to, with our body that can like actually help it heal naturally. And that's really kind of what I'm all about. And I love partnering with people that have really similar, um, viewpoints. So Summer, go ahead and um, introduce yourself. Hi, thank you, Stephanie. Um, uh, my name is Summer Hansen. I'm a registered nurse. Um, I love your introduction um, because my uh, sort of influence is, is so similar. Um, we, we are doing things a little bit differently here too. Um, our shop is uh, aesthetically, it's a, a lot different from a lot of other CBD shops. It's um, very open and bright and welcoming. Um, we have a consultative approach, which is, uh, was important to me coming from a nursing background. Um, and then just personally, I have uh, found uh, cannabis to have had you know, incredible effects on um, uh, anxiety relief, stress relief. It's improved my sleep. It's um, mood stabilizing for me. Um, I don't experience a lot of pain myself, but I've seen firsthand the effects of CBD on people with um, acute pain and chronic pain. And um, I'm, I'm, my goal uh, personally and, and uh, in my new role uh, as business owner uh, in CBD is to um, just e expand the space and um, help destigmatize um, cannabis and how people perceive it um, and bring it to people as an alternative to pharmaceuticals um, and help improving quality of life like it has mine. Yeah. And e even though, you know, when people do have pain with, with uh, whatever pains that they're having, a lot of times you know, anxiety is related to that, um, as well as, um, you know, not able to sleep. And these are all things, and we're going to talk about it today, um, that really do help with, with healing. So, um, you'll get to learn more about that. So like how CBD can help with pain, anxiety, and sleeping. Um, what is CBD? How does CBD work in our bodies? The different sources of CBD. We're going to be going into like MRIs, medications, injections, and how they lead us down a path of more unnecessary procedures. And then really just kind of how you can kind of get back to living. If you have any kind of back pain, um, hip pain, um, any pain down into the legs, honestly, they, they all kind of are connected um, when no one else really could help um, using CBD and, and physical therapy. Yeah, so some, uh, a little bit of education. Uh, CBD is an acronym, it's short for cannabidiol. Um, it is a phytocannabinoid, meaning it's a compound found in plants. Um, there are over 100 cannabinoids found in the hemp plant. And uh, everything in, in my, my CBD shop is hemp derived. Um, everything here is compliant with the 2018 Farm Bill, so it's all legal. It's different from marijuana. Um, it, it is cannabis, but it's, uh, it's kind of a cousin plant to marijuana. Um, CBD itself is not psychoactive. Um, but it is extremely relaxing. It interacts naturally with um, the receptors in our body. Our bodies were actually designed to, um, to use CBD. Uh, and so it, it works really well as a natural anti-inflammatory, as a mood stabilizer. It helps to relieve pain. Um, it, it essentially uh, works throughout our bodies to restore homeostasis, um, which is balance, which essentially equals health. Uh, so this is a really neat uh, infographic uh, describing the differences between hemp and marijuana. Hemp naturally is CBD rich and marijuana is naturally THC rich. Um, hemp is defined as having less than 0.3% delta 9 THC. So CBD um, is not psychoactive. Uh, 
it again has been legal in Texas since the passing of the 2018 Farm Bill, and it has a therapeutic application without the unwanted side effects that um, are often associated with marijuana, like uh, paranoia. Um, this this slide gets a little uh, nerdy, <laughs> and I'm not going to try to pronounce some of these words, but um, I mentioned before that CBD works um, in our bodies, and it's because our bodies have an endocannabinoid system. Um, the endocannabinoid system has CB1 and CB2 receptors. Um, CB1 receptors are found primarily in our brain and central nervous system, and CB2 receptor receptors are found um, primarily in the peripheral organs and in our um, immune cells. And when we take CBD products or, or hemp products, um, they work in two ways. THC works directly on our CB receptors, and CBD works indirectly on our um, CB receptors. Um, when we, again, there's over 120 cannabinoids in the hemp plant. When all those cannabinoids are taken together, um, we call that a full spectrum product, and our bodies are able to use all those cannabinoids um, best when they're taken together. They're most effective that way. Um, but we can certainly take CBD in an isolated form um, as well as THC in an isolated form, and they both have their own uh, kind of unique therapeutic properties. Again, THC works directly and CBD works indirectly by um, uh, increasing some of the chemicals that our body produces on demand in situations of stress. And so again, it, it modulates that immune response and that stress response and um, helps to restore homeostasis. This is another great infographic just showing uh, where the CB1 receptors and CB2 receptors are located throughout the body. Again, CB1 primarily in the uh, brain and CB2 primarily in the uh, in cells. Um, other cannabinoids found in the hemp plant besides CBD and THC, those are the two most studied, um, but CBG, CBN, CBA, um, these are all cannabinoids found in the hemp plant that stimulate our endocannabinoid system. So let's talk a little bit about like how we um, feel pain. There's a lot of different areas that we can, that can create pain in our body. And if you don't get to the source of it, then you're not, you're really just kind of treating a symptom. So, um, you know, the main ways that we feel pain, um, you mechan mechanical pain, thermal pain, chemical pain, autoimmune type symptoms create a lot of uh, different types of, of pains as well as other stuff. And then you have emotional. So if we look at like these main categories, um, thermal pain will be like burns, sunburns, let's take lower going to them. So if, if you look at like mechanical pain and chemical pain, um, those are very different. So chemical pain would be like, you have chemicals in the body, you have an injury that just happened, you get that inflammation that comes in. It's that constant, achy, throbby type of pain. Um, that can be chemical pain. Mechanical pain can present very similar too, but chemical pain is always constant. It's that aching, it's that throbbing type of pain. So if you um, have chemical pain, then you can treat chemical pain with chemicals. And that would be like the injections and medications and things like that. But if your pain is more mechanical, the injections, the medications, those things are not going to work. They're just treating a symptom. So you'll typically hear patients say like, yeah, it kind of took the edge off, but it really didn't do anything for me or it did nothing for me or the injection lasted a little bit, but my pain's right back again. And that's because there's a mechanical component to it and you've got to address that piece of it. And the mechanics are like how the body moves. Um, it's our musculoskeletal system. Um, that is mechanical pain. So you can have people um, that, you know, if, if, you know, I always say like in therapy, we've got to address the uh, mobility, the mobility of the joints um, in multiple areas, because you can have issues in your back. Um, we'll talk about it here in a second that can be coming from your thoracic spine. You can have issues that could be coming from your hip that can create back pain. And you can have things that can actually come from the back and it can be a combination of a lot of things. But if you don't get to improving the mobility in all these different areas, 
you're going to be compensating. Things are not going to be firing or, or like the, the muscles aren't going to be firing correctly because it's not moving correctly. So your first piece is you've got to get the, the mechanics of how we move correctly. And then you've got to get the mechanics of how we um, how the muscles fire because a lot of times muscles haven't activated in a really long time and we've got to start jump starting some of those muscles to start firing so that everything works the way it's supposed to be working. So those are all mechanical type pain. Um, autoimmune type symptoms. Typically people with autoimmune symptoms or they'll get really random pains. Um, there's no patterns to autoimmune symptoms at all. And so mechanical pain patterns with everything that happens. Like we can see the patterns, we move you, we kind of expect what things are going to happen. Um, very has a lot of patterns to it. Autoimmune conditions do not have patterns. They're, they're, your, your immune system is, is reacting and it's creating all these offshoots and people will get these random weird pains, no rhyme or reason. There's no patterns with anything. And that's when we start looking at like, are you noticing that you're a little fatigued, um, more fatigued, not sleeping at night, um, um, having some stomach issues, bloating, those kind of things? Then we we can start going down the path of we've got to address this because that's where some of your symptoms are coming from. Um, and again, if you don't get to the source of what's happening, you're just treating symptoms. And then you have an emotional component to it. And we see this all the time. A lot of times when we can get people to understand what they're doing, and these are the things that are going to help reduce your pain and get you back to feeling good. A lot of times that emotional component is out. Like they, they're in control of their pain. They no longer have that piece of it. But sometimes the emotional component started, you know, a year ago and they've had this for so long that they're so fearful of moving or there's something else that's happened in their life that they've got to get to. And that's somehow stirring up some of the emotional things that are happening, or there's something that's going on in their life right now that is creating some of their pain. So typically what we notice when people have emotional components is the fact that everything's improving, like all of their baselines are improving their strength. Like they come in and they can move and, and it's fine. But then all of a sudden they'll come in like, I'm hurting. Like I, I, I'm still hurting. I'm like, well, that's really weird because everything is moving good. You, you, should, you're, you're, you should be progressing. You start diving into like, well, tell me, when does it hurt? Oh, well, you know, when I'm um, going to work in the morning, I have a lot of pain. I go, what's going on at work? And then all of a sudden you start hearing, well, it's just really like, I'm really overwhelmed. I have all this stuff on my plate. Like there's been a lot of issues. I'm like, oh, there we go. Like you're going to work and the emotions are creating some of the pain that's happening in your body. Or you'll hear, hear people say like, I go on vacation and I can, I feel fine. But when I come back here, my pain starts again. Again, those are emotional components that have to be addressed. So you have to get to the source of the problem. Otherwise you're just treating a symptom. And there's so many different ways that we feel pain we have got to address all the ways. So why does surgery, especially back surgery in particular, lead down to two and three other surgeries? And a lot of this is because um, most of the time when people come into our office and they have back pain, they're not sure what they did. Like they had pain one day and um, they don't know what they did that created some of their pain. And what what happens is when you go in and you have surgery is the doctors are like, okay, this is what we need to do. We're going to have the surgery Well, we'll start with a laminectomy or disectomy, um, take the piece out, give you more space, whatever the case, but they'll have the surgery. They'll feel better because the pieces that are irritated feel better. But what happens is they go back to their daily activities of the things that they were doing, not knowing what they were doing, creating the same patterns that they were doing. And all of a sudden their pain starts coming back again. And they're like, I don't understand why, like it didn't work. Like it's, it's my pain. It's back again, because there's things that there was an education as to what you were doing throughout the day that was creating some of your problems, as well as what you can do to help improve your situation. We can figure all these things out. So because there's not, there's not that education in the medical system, um, it's leading down to a second surgery and a third surgery, um, and then fusions. And then people are still continuing. We, I mean, we have a patient right now that came in and had three level fusion, um, in her back and 
Um, they made more space in other areas of it. And she's like, I am still hurting. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you're not even moving. Like I could tell the way she was guarded and, and, and not the way she was moving that we have got to get your body moving um, more in the areas that it can so that you can start getting some relief. And then we've got to start retraining some of these muscles to fire when you don't have the pain. So there's a lot of things that you can do. Um, I know last time I was like, oh my gosh, I don't have a slide in here on MRIs, but I want to talk a little bit about MRIs too. So MRIs um, are very expensive selfies. Um, that's how I describe them. It doesn't mean that they're not necessary, but usually what I tell patients um, is that if you get an MRI, is it going to change the course of what you're going to do? And if it's not going to change the course of the treatment, then you don't need to be getting an MRI. Then when we need MRIs or when, oh, there's some red flags going on, we need to check and see what's going on. Or um, I'm, you know, sure we're going to, we're going to have to have a surgery. I just don't know what kind of surgery that we need to have. So we need to do an MRI so we can kind of figure this out. That's going to change the course of your treatment of what the outcome potentially may be. But if you're like, I don't want to have surgery and um, I don't want to have injections. I want to find other ways of doing it. MRIs don't, don't help us out at all. Um, if you look at the research on MRIs, if you took a hundred people with no pain whatsoever, 60 to 80% of those people will show something on MRIs. They'll show rotator cuff tears on MRIs, fully functional people, no pain whatsoever, herniated discs, disc degeneration, stenosis, narrowing of the canal. These are fully functional people um, that have that have no issues whatsoever. And 60 to 80% of them are going to show something. And what happens is, is like, as we get older, it's kind of like what I described, you know, we get wrinkles on our face. It's just a part of aging. It's what, what happens as we age. Well, as we get older, we get wrinkles on our bone. There may be some wear and tear that happens, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's where pain's coming from, which is why it's showing up. You know, as we get older, the, the more things are showing up but these people have no pain whatsoever. So it's really important to like, you know, there's other ways that you could probably use your money that would be um, more valuable than just going in and getting an MRI so they can see what's going on to figure out what they want to do next. If they want to send you to some, some more conservative care, the MRI is not going to help. Um, it's not going to help us out. We, we can literally figure things out and almost pinpoint exactly what's going on basically by, by doing movement exams and retesting your movement after doing some treatment to kind of figure out what's going on. And we can explain, explain it all. So I always like showing this, um, you know, this is kind of the, the disc in the model. So if you look at like these rings around this disc, so these rings are what I call, they're called the annulus, but I call them, think of them like, like a ligament. So if you have um, damage to parts of these rings, from doing something repetitive. So what happens, you know, a lot of times in, in, in our daily life, we bend forward 3,000 to 4,000 times a day, constantly bending forward. We don't ever reverse that direction. And so if you're constantly moving your joint in one direction over and over again, if you think of like this disc, it's kind of gel filled. As we get older, it gets to be more particle filled. If we're putting pressure through the top part of this disc all the time, repeatedly throughout the day, it starts moving materials to the back. Well, guess what's in the back? We have our nerves and, um, and spinal cord and things like that. Rarely do we see spinal cord issues. It does happen and we have seen it before. Um, but there's a thick ligament that really protects it. But you don't get protection from these nerves. So for constantly bending forward doing activities, we can basically damage these rings. And what happens is when you damage these rings, every time you do these activities, it's like you have a wound on your arm and you keep on stabbing that wound. And you're like, I don't understand why this wound won't get better, but you keep on stabbing the wound <laughs> um, because you don't know what you're doing throughout the day that's creating some of your problems. And so you're like frustrated because it's like, it's never going away. Well, it's the same thing here. So if you think of like these rings, like the ligament, like you had an ankle sprain, if you keep on twisting your ankle and it's painful, Every time you twist your ankle that's damaged, it hurts. So if you can constantly are twisting your ankle, it's never going to heal. And that's kind of what happens with these rings. And then you can get bulging and there's enough bulging that can happen and it can hit a nerve and then you can get pain down the leg. Now, a lot of times um, it's just stops at the disc protrusion. There's not very many times where actually you see material coming outside of the disc or it's um, even when you have the sequester, this is even worse. They usually can't even do surgery on some of these things. Um, 
rarely do you see this. They present very differently. A lot of times they're, I mean, it's like unrelenting pain. They can't move. Nothing helps. These are typically ones that you're going to have to have surgery. I've only sent a few people in 20 years to have surgery on something like this. I can tell you in the last five years, we've sent zero people um, to having back surgery um, because we can spend so much time in education and, and guiding them through a program. I've spent, I've spent, we spent zero um, sent zero people to having back surgery um, in the last five years. And we've had many people that had surgery scheduled and we were able to pull them off. But once we kind of, we had kind of know its direction, you can get herniations out to the side. Um, we, I just did a video explaining that not too long ago. Um, and that presents very differently. Typically when you have issues on the outside, it's going to be like things like, you know, sitting, walking, standing, lying down, like usually you have to have some sort of rotation that makes you feel a little bit better lying down, but it hurts all the time. Um, and we can figure, figure these things out. Typically when you have a herniation in the back, um, things that you see is like, gosh, when I'm sitting, it hurts, or maybe it feels better when I sit, but when I try to stand up, I can't straighten. I, I feel like I'm 80 years old, but when I start walking and I start moving, I start feeling a lot better. That just gives us indications that, wow, they're feeling better with some extension. Um, they hurt when they flex. So we need to do more extension and, and kind of move the material away by going in the opposite direction. So understanding like, like this, this is kind of how we kind of describe things. And even if there's parts of joints that aren't moving, we can still figure out which areas we need to go to get it to start moving. Once the movement starts happening, you start feeling better, then we can get into kind of the strengthening phase of things. So how can CBD affect uh, chronic pain symptoms? Uh, a lot of our customers come in complaining about pain, um, pain, stress, and anxiety, and um, lack of sleep or poor sleep quality. <clears throat> Those are um, kind of the top complaints that we get uh, for people coming in shopping for CBD products. And CBD, uh, it's kind of a, a generalized term, um, but CBD, again, is just a single cannabinoid in the hemp plant. Um, and we tend to recommend um, a combination of products or a combination of cannabinoids to um, really uh, have the, the most effect on um, people's symptoms. Um, chronic pain, inflammation, arthritis, uh, those, those are uh, kind of three big ones. CBD can affect those, um, again, by helping to restore balance. I was actually just listening to a podcast this morning talking about um, pharmaceuticals and um, specifically anti-anxiety medications uh, and how they are prescribed to treat uh, conditions like pain because they affect the neurotransmitters in our brain. And CBD does the same thing. It, it restores balance um, throughout our bodies, um, but especially to the neurotransmitters in our brains and can help uh, influence how we feel pain and how, uh, how we perceive pain. Uh, same with sleeplessness. I like what Stephanie said earlier about um, emotional pain. Um, stress and anxiety can... Uh, can cause physical uh, responses in our bodies. Um, it can cause inflammation. It can cause us to have aches. If we're not sleeping well at night, um, that's just contributing to the cycle of um, inflammation and uh, creating more pain. And so by taking CBD products, we can regulate our sleep cycles. We can regulate that immune response and um, effectively improve sleep and uh, reduce pain. Yeah, our body heals too, and um, when we sleep, and if we're not sleeping, you're you're really um, not helping part of the healing process. Absolutely. <laughs> so some of the causes of back pain, um, like I was describing before, we always look at the mobility first, and then you start getting into disability. A lot of times, what you find when you go to other places, um, they will start immediately like bring knees to chest bring your legs side to side. Let's do hamstring stretches. Let's do some core strengthening. And you can't even get to that part unless, unless you improve that mobility and figure out like where everything is coming from. And when we look at mobility and how the joints are moving, we're looking at the back, we're looking at the hip and we're looking at the thoracic spine. These are all areas that can refer into the back. Thoracic spine can actually refer into the hip. I've had people that had no issues in, in, their back at all, but they kept on having hip pain. You're moving their hip around like everything moves fine. This is really weird. You start asking more questions. You're like, oh, let's look up here. And as soon as you start mobilizing, like, oh my God, I feel that in my hip. I'm like, this is where it's coming from. Um, and you have to improve that. Then you can go in and get into the muscle imbalances and the movement habits that we've created because of 
us not being able to move correctly. So we start addressing that. We got to get into lifestyle. Like I talk about that a lot because what is it that you're doing throughout the day that may be creating some of your problems? We've got to have a game plan for that. Some of it's like, you know, people have a sitting lifestyle because they're in the computer a lot. We've got to have a game plan for that. Some people want to go and they love to garden. We've got to give a, we have to give you a game plan around that. There's a lot of bending with gardening stuff. And so we come up with ways that people can continue to do those things to, um, but doing it where it's protective to their body. And then honestly, you just have to get to the source of the problem. Um, if, if you don't, you're just treating a symptom and that's ultimately kind of what we do in the medical system. A lot of times is, is, you know, we're just treating symptoms that honestly, they just don't have enough time, um, to be able to, to figure things out. I mean, a 10 minute conversation with the doctor is not going to figure it out. Now, if you fell and you fractured your arm, uh, easy x-ray. Yeah. You fractured your arm. That's easy to do. But most of the time, People have no clue what they did and why they started hurting. And that's going to take more time to kind of figure that out. So I love this slide because it really shows you how, um, how the endocannabinoid system, again, which is a, a physiological system within our bodies, uh, is found throughout all the other physiological systems in our bodies. So um, it's not anatomically isolated, like our neurological system, like our um, respiratory system, our cardiovascular system. Those are all, all anatomically isolated. Sorry, my phone's ringing. <laughs> okay, sorry. Oh, Tracy slammed out there and we're the only two here. <laughs> But uh, the endocannabinoid system is found literally in every other physiological system in our bodies. And so wherever an imbalance um, exists, CBD, uh, when we consume it, works to uh, interact with our endocannabinoid system and restore balance um, throughout our bodies. So I mentioned uh, the term full spectrum earlier, and I think I've mentioned the term isolate. And I'm just going to elaborate a little bit on what those mean. Um, again, CBD it, and THC, those are just two um, specific cannabinoids uh, of over 100 cannabinoids found in the hemp plant. They all have their own therapeutic value. Um, isolated, they are like less than 25% um, as effective as when taken together with other cannabinoids. So an isolated product would be um, a CBD product by itself or a THC product by itself. Broad spectrum is typically um, uh, all the cannabinoids, like a full spectrum minus THC. And that's um, a product that I would recommend to someone who uh, is worried about uh, failing a drug test for work um, or for whatever reason, just are not interested in uh, consuming THC. Um, even though our full spectrum products contain only 0.3% Delta 9 THC, which is not enough to be psychoactive, but could potentially show up on a drug test. Um, a tincture is usually a CBD product that's suspended in a carrier oil or liquid, like um, either an oil or a vegetable glycerin. Uh, flour or bud is, uh, is pretty much the most natural way that uh, we can consume. This is uh, literally the flower, the flowering part of the hemp plant. Um, you would consume that by smoking or vaping. And then um, Delta eight, nine, and 10. Those are confusing terms for a lot of people that are new to CBD. Um, Delta eight mm -hmm. and Delta 10 are analogs of Delta nine THC. Um, they, they just behave a little bit differently. Um, they're both more mild than Delta nine THC, um, but can have the same or very similar effects to Delta nine THC. Uh, and Delta nine THC is um, found in high concentration of marijuana. Okay, so I do have some of our products here. Zoom uh, <laughs> inhalation, that's gonna be the fastest um, way to affect uh, a change in your body. And so inhalation, um, whether it's smoking or vaping, that's gonna be almost immediate relief. Um, after that, uh, oral or sublingual is gonna be the next uh, fastest. And um, we have products like uh, soft gels that you take just like uh, any other vitamin or supplement and um, tincture. Uh, this would be a sublingual option. This is going to be uh, a, 
uh, this is an oil product. It's uh, just a dropper that you put right under your tongue uh, and it absorbs in the capillaries in our mouth subliquely. Um, edibles like candies, gummies. We also have honey, uh, coffee infused with CBD and then um, topicals and salves. Um, these are really great and definitely products that I would um, pair with uh, it's someone who's also getting physical therapy because they're excellent for um, d uh, direct pain relief. Yep. And you can't forget about your smoothies, your slushies That's as well. Right. <laughs> if you haven't tried those, you've got to go and try it. Whoever it was that said they were nearby, come by today for uh, our happy hour from two to four twenty every day um, for half price slushies. That's about 20 milligrams of Delta eight per slushy. And they are, um, they're fun obviously because who doesn't love a slushy, um, <laughs> but they're really relaxing and uh, just a, a great way to consume. You said two to four, two to four. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and they're how much? They're 12. They're uh, half price. They're normally 12, uh, $11 actually. Um, so five fifty during happy hour. I'll be there. Right. <laughs> so um, wanted to kind of talk about some success stories. Um, Summer has some as well, but this is a patient that had um, massive chronic back pain. Um, literally, he um, had been through pain management for 10 years. Never, um, you know, he never wanted to have surgery, but he literally had been in pain management so long that um, a couple times he had to go in and out of drug rehab because of just trying to get him off the pain, the painkillers. But he came into um, our office and we started working with him. And I think he said that we're like the first person that said, we're going to get you back. It may take you a little bit of time, but we're going to be able to get you back. And he um, we did slowly. We got his mobility back. He was so deconditioned that even doing a little bit could flare up his back. But as we continually gradually um, as we were moving and improving his mobility, we gradually improved his strengthening. He got to everything. Now he does Pilates. He's, um, traveling the world, having a great time. He just bought a place over in Italy. Um, I, I still talk to him. It's been, you know, a couple of years since we we've seen him, um, in our office, but we still stay in touch and, and how he's doing. But yeah, like this is someone that's been in pain for 10 years doing the pain management route and, um, never found anyone that could actually really help him. So, um, we did very gratifying, super gratifying, um, to be able to help people. And that's another reason that, um, I'm really happy in this role, um, because I, I do get to continue, um, like I did in, in nursing with helping people. Um, the common denominator with these two Google reviews is, uh, really what I talked about earlier, how our, so uh, our shop is different from a lot of other CBD stores. Um, almost everyone has heard of CBD. And um, I mean, I could throw a rock from my store and hit <laughs> like five other CBD shops. They're, they're um, ubiquitous or becoming so. Um, but uh, ours is different aesthetically. Again, it's very bright. It's welcoming. There's a sitting area. And we have a consultative approach. So any, um, any, any customer who comes into our shop um, should expect to get a very friendly greeting and um, uh, a listening ear and then a lot of questions to really understand what the what the symptoms are or what the goal is um, when they're when they're coming in to buy CBD products. And um, we take that approach because we know it's important um, for overall wellness and for healing and for people to be really comfortable here and for people to trust us. Um, we also do uh, a follow up call with our first time customers uh, within a week, just to make sure that, uh, they're taking the products appropriately, that they're getting the experience that they expected and to answer any questions that they may have about how to properly dose. So, um, that's how we set ourselves apart. And, um, I, I think that our customers appreciate that. Yeah, and it's just like anything else, like, you know, when someone comes into our office and we're giving them some stuff to work on, we've got to see how their body responds to that. So there's times, you know, the first visit, they can get really sore the next day. And we're like, we just have to adjust it a little bit because we don't know how the body's going to respond. But based on how the body responds, gives us indications on we need to do a little bit more. We need to do a little bit less. And it's the same thing with this. Like sometimes you're, you'll get something like, whoa, I had a massive response from this. Well, awesome. Great. 
but maybe we just have to back down a little bit because it's a little bit too much. And there's other times where we have to add, you're going to have to add more. So it's really the same thing with, um, with CBD and, and really getting it tailored. So if people are like, no, nah, it's never worked for me, they might have gone just to the wrong place. They might have had the wrong product. Um, they aren't having the service to really understand like what it is that you're looking for to, to match it and to um, know how to dose it. And that's really what they'll do. Absolutely. So some of the things that we have for our, um, our clients that um, came to our um, uh, talk, our live talk, as well as our virtual talk. Um, for us, we do um, what we call free discovery visit to really help you um, discover how we might be able to help, why things are, aren't working for you, what you've tried in the past and, and give you some education around that. Um, so really we can just help you make a better decision um, about your health. So we, we always have a couple of spots like that open each week for, um, for clients. And then if you decide that, yep, um, I want to come in, you will also get a full hundred dollars off our full evaluation. If, if you use it within the next uh, 15 days, or at least get it scheduled in the next 15 days. So we have that for you. And then summer does, um, is doing a CBD special for you. Um, well, if you're at the office, you got the free Delta eight gummy sample in the full spectrum, but I'm sure if you wanted to come and try that out, I'm sure she would honor that there. And then 10% off of any purchases from this talk. So that's, yeah, so um, that's special today. So anyone who comes in, um, if you're close by or anyone who's been on this talk today, if you just reference this talk, when you come in, we'll get you that free sample and then 10% discount. 